All right. So welcome everyone today to the Sekhmet Venus Sisters gathering. It's so good to see all of your faces. So good to see everyone here uh, to feel this community, uh, knowing that you're coming from all quarters and also knowing um, that you are, um, you know, each and every one of you that are here are probably feeling this call, feeling this call to Sekhmet, and that's why you're here. Um, so I just wanted to open today with with how this even got started, why this is happening now, um, and there are a couple of reasons. Uh, my name is Tammy Brunk, and I am the co-founder of Venus Alchemy with Kaylin Castell. You'll see all of us here, and um, so I have been... Um, we've been working with the Venus mysteries for a very long time. And in that work, we have different Venus cycles that are very active at certain times. And right now we're in the middle of a Leo Venus cycle. And there are specific deities uh, that we can work with expressions of the goddess with each cycle. And Sekhmet is one that really calls and called to us from the very beginning of this work. When we first started that in 2014 um, and, and in, 2015, and the last time we had this Venus cycle, uh, Kaylin and I were, and Catherine, who's here now too, Raven, were at the Sekhmet Temple in Nevada, which is an area that's right outside of um, Las Vegas, and it is a temple dedicated to the sacred feminine. So um, I had been in a conversation with Raven, with Catherine, Ravenwood, who we're so glad to have here as one of the sisters. And um, in our conversation, it became so clear that that Sekhmet and, and any of you who are in priestess circles who are working with the goddess, working with the feminine divine, uh, many of you will already know Sekhmet. You'll know who she is. You'll know um, why she's important. Uh, but I, in that those conversations, it just became very clear that in this moment in time that her stories were needed. So to give a little bit more context, part of also why I um, felt called to do this is because you know, we are right now gathering. It's such a potent time. I don't have to tell you this, but we're all being called forward to uh, meet this very challenging time in our own unique ways and to come together as voices for peace, as voices for unity. And it can be so easy to get fragmented. It can be so easy to be divided and separated from one another at a time when we need each other so deeply. And it can be so challenging to make sense of the, the craziness and the incoherence of our times if we're not really grounded, if we're not really rooted, and also if we don't have a context or a frame for a bigger story, a bigger understanding of what's unfolding. And this is why our myths, this is why our sacred stories um, from the ancient past are, can be so healing and so instructive. And part of what this, uh, for myself, uh, where I am right now, I'm in a place where I'm in New Mexico, but I'm currently surrounded by really dear friends who are um, permaculture. My friends next door, they're permaculture designers. They have a little permaculture farm in the middle of the city. Uh, they're seed savers. Um, this, you know, really sweet friend, this this um, individual who is has been managing this for some years. When I first arrived, he was struggling with climate change. And he was struggling with the, the massive scale of um, what our earth is undergoing right now. And he's someone who's been really devoted to community, to being a good environmentalist for many years. And he was in this moment, like I see so many people in right now where he's just asking, what's the use? Like, what good is all of these little things that we're doing? Why does it matter? And we were having some very soulful conversations about that. And what I find myself telling people sometimes is that I have to draw in from myself these stories about other times that this isn't the first time that we as a human species have been on the, in a, on the precipice like we are now and that there are stories of other times like that we need those stories so i told him the stories of durga i told him the stories of sekhmet and when i told him the story of sekhmet which kaylin is going to go a little more deeply into and we're going to talk about more today he what he said to me was really stunning. He said, you know, I've never heard those stories. And I feel like everybody should hear those stories now because we need to have a deeper understanding of these these larger cycles we're a part of. We need that instruction. So that was really also a deeper part of why it felt so important. And that we have here, you know, community, not all of you, many of you are priestesses, many of you are women, 
um, and men who have tools, who have awareness that is very needed in this time. So we're gathering and it's a very good time to do that. Um, so that's just a little piece of why we're here. And I feel so honored that Kaylin said, I said, well, it was going to be an interview with Raven because she is a Catherine Ravenwood because Catherine is a, an initiated priestess to Sekhmet. She um, has been working deeply in preparation for this and working with Sekhmet. And then I realized, why don't I reach out to Kaylin and to Sheridan with the beautiful community that, that they're still stewarding. And so that's how this happened. So now we have the four of us and all of you here present. And I'm so glad you're here. And I'm going to turn it over to Kaylin. So um, Kaylin, if you would just continue and tell us a little more about yourself. And yes, Raven. Um, suddenly my music has playing. Are you hearing my music? She's I'm a trying to bit. Think, okay, I've tried to figure out how to turn it off. So Okay, there it is. You you turned it off. Okay. Or oh. Okay. Just need it whatever. All right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Oh my gosh. Um of course Sekhmet is one of my favorites and I'm really excited to uh, any time to talk about her and to connect with her. And uh for those of you who might not know, I got to go to Egypt in 1999 with Nikki Scully and um, connect with Sekhmet in her temple in Karnak. And that was life-changing for me. Uh, I knew about her before that. I knew her story, but I didn't really have that super personal connection. And one of the things that that gave me was this understanding that the story I'm about to tell you is the story we've inherited, but is not. And, and there's, there's, aspects of it that are, I'm sure that are absolutely true, <laughs> but it's not the whole story. And that Sekhmet goes way back and Ra uh, Raven can share more about that was with, with us in a moment, but she goes way back even before Ra. But the story is that she is the daughter of the sun god Ra. And the sun god is not happy with the people because they are not honoring the, the timings and the ceremonies and being kind to each other, whatever it is they're not doing, he's not happy. So he, the story is he sends his daughter Sekhmet to go um, clear it, clean it up. <laughs> and, uh, and she's, um, she gets on a bloodlust and she just starts taking out everybody. And her, her cleanup is just way too beyond the beyond. And so Ra's like, okay, that's good enough. You can come back now. And she won't come back. She won't stop. So then he's like, oh my God, what do I do now? So he um, gets together with the other gods and goddesses and they come up with this plan and they take um, beer and put um, like mandrake root and all kinds of different herbal things in it and crush up pomegranate juice and make it look like blood. And when she stops to drink the blood because she's on her bloodlust, she gets absolutely totally drunk, blackout, um, pass out. And uh, so there's two different ways the story is told. When she wakes up, she has tr transformed into Hathor, the goddess of love and beauty. Or when she wakes up, she, um, the first person she sees is Pata, and they are the ones who are the, um, they, they, they're the Memphis trio. They, they're, you know, he, she becomes his consort. They have a child together, Nefertum or Nefertum or however you pronounce that. And together, um, they're all about healing. And so the, there's different ways we can tune into this story and understand it. But I feel like the the you know the out of control feminine um is probably a patriarchal version of the story so raven you you can probably jump in here and and fill in some of the blanks okay thank you um yes yeah, so sekhmet with Ptah, they were part of the original cosmology of egypt that created egypt that created everything and sekhmet is the force of the sun she is the purifying fire that comes in and, and and clarifies things with her fire. So yeah, I think she's way before Ra. <laughs> but, and she's part of a, she's a triple goddess and we forget this. So she's Sekhmet, the crone, Hathor, who is sometimes called the maiden or the mother, either one I forget, and Bas, the cat form. But she is the crone of the blood mysteries. And we forget that. 
And so it's very important today, we are going to be working with her. Um, she's gonna come through and talk about the blood mysteries with us. So uh, that's probably all I need to say about her. Oh yeah, one more thing, she's a great healer. Yes, the Cobra, this is her Uraeus, her sun disc. This gives her her power. Here's the sun, that she is the sun. And the Cobra is the uh, protector, the goddess of lower Egypt. And if Cobra is a great healer. And so Sekhmet wears that healing right there. So right away, we know she's a healer and she purifies. So her healing comes from purifying. So she's also known for her, her vengeance and as her mighty drinking up all the blood, but she's also known for her fierce compassion. And of all the goddesses I've ever experienced, Sekhmet's compassion is the one that brings me to tears every time. So she's phenomenal there. So that's all I need to say about that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Raven. Sharon, do you have anything you want to share about the story and how it moved you? Or... No, I think you both did a lovely job. I don't have anything to add to that. Yeah, I think I, I just want to add um, that in the moment, you know, all of our hearts, I'm sure are, well, our hearts can be in many different places, but I know many of our hearts are with the people of the Middle East right now. And I don't think it's a coincidence that her stories come from that part of the world. And so again, um, that this moment, this time we have together, it really, it, it, it is when we decided to do this was before everything had happened. And so this is this is a cauldron for us. This entire space is a place for everybody's hearts to be present. Um, the way that the format will work is that we're going to um, kind of go in back and forth. This is a round table. So we're beginning with the story of Sekhmet for those who are just arriving, uh, just to give a little bit of context of who is she, who's Sekhmet. And I began with just a little bit of why we're here, what this, you know, what the purpose and intention is. And then we'll talk a little bit more about what's happening astrologically uh, with the Leo Venus cycle. Uh, and then we are going to invite Raven to share, Captain Ravenwood, to share a beautiful uh, meditation that she has really been, uh, she's been in deep conversation with Sekhmet, uh, with the medicine of that uh, for some time now. And so she's going to share that, that um, meditation. And then we're going to have a bit more of a kind of a conversation, a Q&A. So definitely keep your questions or you can post them and we will hopefully as we go. Um, but I will just say the other thing that struck me as you said that Raven about the fact that she is really going back to the primordial essence of who she is. She is, as you said, she's the sun, she's the purifying sun. And I find it very interesting that what we see right now with the sun is that, you know, it's been very active. It's been very alive with so many electromagnetic storms that many would say that our entire system right now is and a massive change, it's massive transformation. And so literally we see the sun um, really uh, bringing alive for many of us, this, this process of transformation. So that strikes me. And also, as you said, Kaylin, there's a, a story before that we don't know, it's too ancient of who she was. And I believe there are, correct me if I'm wrong, it, as much as 20,000 or 30 ancient images of the, the goddess uh, with the lion head. So she was the original great mother goddess and one of her many forms. So I, but I think I'll, I'll leave that there. So, um, so, so I wanted to ask Sheridan, would you be willing to share with us? It's so important to understand the context of where we're at right now to weave these stories with a larger story of what's happening in the sky, because when we do that, we are also, um, we are more able to engage with the mysteries and inform them just as they inform us. So Sheridan, would you be willing to talk a little bit about where we're at with Venus and a little bit more of an introduction of that and how that weaves with Sekhmet? Sure. So um, we're in, I'm sure a bunch of you know, but for any of you that don't know, we started a new Venus cycle when Venus rose into the morning sky in Leo, right? So Venus did her whole, she finished out the Capricorn cycle in Leo, did a retrograde cycle in Leo, and then rose into the morning sky in Leo, right? So it was this special long period of time where Venus stayed in Leo and then just recently has moved into Virgo, which is like how perfect is we're meeting 
Venus is in the lion constellation right now, right? She met with Regulus, the heart of the lion constellation, and she's moving through the lion as we're here together. And it's such a powerful time. So, you know, the Leo Venus cycle, right? So the whole 19 month cycle is characterized as what we like to call a Venus alchemy, the meta goddess in Leo, right? So the lioness goddess, the lion goddess. So Sekhmet is just so, she's the lioness goddess, right? And all the aspects that um, Raven was sharing with us and Kaylin. So it's just so perfect that she's here with us, guiding us as one of the guides as part of this particular cycle. And for me in my Leo, in my Venus return, the Leo cycle, it's been really amazing for me to start connecting into Sekhmet through this cycle. She's been, you know, on my radar and something I've been interested, you know, she's been one I've been interested in and wanted to um, tap into more. So I'm kind of the new kid on the block with these other three Sekhmet ladies here, but um, we started to read Sekhmet Transformation in the Belly of the Goddess together as a group, which is open to anyone. So you're all welcome to join, it's free. Um, and that's really been my full, like really starting to dive into her of going through that alchemical process. And it has been rich, which I'm happy to share about. Um, but I'll give you all a time to, if you want to share anything about this lioness cycle that we're in, in the lion right now. <laughs> You know, yeah, Kaylin, do you want to jump in at all? Or I can't. <laughs> or I can't I, either way. Oh. <laughs> um, so I have I have the the cat behind me here. Um, just I, I one of the things I I, I want to share is that sec, as Venus goes through her cycle, she rises as morning star as uh, as T Tammy was speaking into. Uh, she's in the morning sky for about nine months. Then she drops into the um, underworld, which is basically when Venus is with the sun and the sun is the source of light and life for our planet. So the sun is um, a way to source something new, but it's, it's also can represent a death and rebirth time. And, uh, and then Venus will rise into the evening sky and spend about nine months in the evening sky going through her different phases of the evening star journey. And it was almost exactly a year ago on October 22nd, 2022, uh, when Venus was with the sun um, last year, Venus and the sun came back mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. And right as that was happening, I got a message I, I, and doing a med. I don't even know how it came. It was like some, I was meditating or maybe I was just like thinking about Venus and the sun. It also so just so happens to be my husband's Peter and I anniversary. So that was our 16 year wedding anniversary. Tomorrow will be our 17 year. And we got married with Venus and the sun conjunct also in 2006, that was Mars was also there. So we did that on purpose because that was a way to create a new um, marriage paradigm, sourcing it with the sun, bring it with Venus and Mars with the sun, creating a new way for, for the masculine and feminine to come together. And so last year when this was happening, I, um, I got this message. Sekhmet said, I'm Venus with the sun. <laughs> and I'm like, how did I never get that before? Like, of course she wears the sun on her head. And then I went and did some research and found that Sekhmet has often been associated with Venus. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to add that mm -hmm. piece as well. Mm, wow. Thank you, Kaylin. Mm. I'm going to actually, you know, I just wanted to take a moment to, um, I had someone, a, a, a lovely uh, friend in the circle who just mentioned, you know, we didn't open with prayer, right? So, and we're right already in the middle of the conversation and there's a lot to share, but I, I may not go into a prayer, but I'm going to just ask us actually just for a moment, I'm just, just feeling the energy because we're all collectively moving through so much. So maybe just to take one moment, just to kind of take a few deep breaths, and then we're just going to, and then I'll continue. I've, I've, I have a little I'll say about the Venus cycle as well. So maybe just to, maybe just taking a moment, I'm actually going to invite people to put their hands on their hearts. 
this might be a little into the conversation, but let's just put our hands on our hearts and just really fully arrive. And let's just arrive by beginning by just really taking a good deep breath and just setting the strong intention to fully land into our bodies. Fully landing into the present moment, knowing that this moment that we find ourselves in really requires us to choose to be present, to choose to be here. So as we let this breath just fill our lungs, just taking a moment to say thank you. Thank you. Gratitude for the oxygen, for the clean, fresh air that we breathe. Thank you. Thank you for these lungs, these healthy, strong lungs. As we breathe in, thank you for this gift of life. Thank you for this incarnation. Thank you for the ability to be here and to be present to this time of this unfolding, even with its heartbreak, even with its pain, even with all of the places where we have questions about how and when perhaps we will experience the level of peace, the level of balance that we want to experience. And as we begin now, as we just really drop a little bit further into our bodies and into the present moment so that everything moving forward is really from that place, just feels like maybe also in this moment, it might be good to really remember and connect into the sacred sound of Sekhmet that is associated with her, one of those sacred sounds. And that's the Sa Sekhim Sahu uh, mantra. So you might um, even mute it, you might just uh, does anyone actually, Kaylin or Raven, I'm going to ask you if either of you might be willing to kind of lead us in that. So Sasek and Sahu, we can just do it three times maybe as a group and maybe explain a little bit about what it is, what that means, that phrase. And then we can just do that and drop a little deeper as we continue. Go ahead, Kaylin. <laughs> okay. All right. So Sasekem Sahu is Sekmet's mantra. And it basically, I think of it as a power mantra. It's a way to invoke her presence into, um, into our awareness, into a, a deepening in our awareness. Sa, which is S-A, is the breath of life. So through the breath, we um, connect with Sakem, and that is the sacred power or life force, the power energy. And Sahu is the realized human being, or we could say, fully realized human being. I don't know what that means exactly, but somebody who is awake, aware, and attuned to themselves. So when we are invoking Sa, say Kem, Sahu, we are invoking through the breath of life, through the sacred power of life force, the um, realization of our, our true essence and who we really are. And that's really what the Leo mysteries are all about, is remembering our divinity, remembering that we are no less or no um, more or less divine than anybody else or anything else. We're all in that um, divine expression. So, um, so that's the, that's the mantra. Thank you. Thank you. So sh shall we say it together three yes. times? Yes, that would be perfect. Thanks. Yeah. Sa Sekem Sahu. Sa, sa kem, sahu. Sa, sahu. Sa, sa kem, sahu. Sa, sa kem, sahu. Thank you for that. So, so just um, again, so just with that intention, just to drop deeper, to connect into the ancient wisdom that we're we're really wanting to um, reference and honor today. So, um, I'll talk a little bit more about the astrology and in a really uh, kind of a a simple way that I think we can feel in our bodies. And it's to, to understand that this, you know, every Venus cycle, when we work with Venus, with the exception of a few different cultures that are very important as well, um, but it with what we're presenting now, we can see Venus as the feminine principle, as um, feminine deity. We can also see her as the twin of the earth, the sister to the earth. So when we work with Venus, we're working with the feminine, we're working with also a reflection we see what's happening with her. We can feel what's happening in our own bodies, in our own communities, in our own lives. And um, 
when Venus is in her morning star phase, which is where she is now, and she's just two days away from uh, what we say is maximum elongation. So right now she's high up in the morning sky. Maybe some of you have seen her. She's so beautiful and brilliant, shining in the east before sunrise. And she is um, at her furthest from the sun. So she's pretty close to the highest place in the sky. So she's going to be at maximum elongation Monday. So for all intents and purposes, she's there now. And she... Um, so when she's morning star, this is about an eight month phase. It started when she first appeared around August 19th. That's when you could say the goddess, you could say Sekhmet or the other versions of the Leo goddess when we began to connect with her energies, when she began to come alive for us. And morning star is a very important phase because what happens in the morning sky is Venus starts very close and bright in the sky and then she rises up higher, higher, brighter, brighter. Now we're at the highest point, almost really almost her brightest. And um, and beginning at about now, she's going to start her descent down closer and closer to the horizon line. So when she's morning star, as she descends, the in the Western tradition, morning star Venus could be seen as Luciferous, could be seen as Inanna in the Sumerian tradition that we're working with. She could be seen as um Christ, as as um there are other, and even as Sophia, and each of these stories has to do with a very bright being who is then for various reasons, chooses to descend or chooses to go into the other world. And so goes from very bright to, to disappearing beneath the horizon. So morning star in the stories of Inanna is when the great goddess of heaven and earth chooses to go to the below. And as she does that, she goes through seven gates and she removes a vestment at each gate. So there's a releasing process. And the way this connects to the Venus cycle is that that's when Venus is with the crescent moon, the waning crescent moon every month. So there's a letting go, a letting go, a surrendering, a surrendering. Um, and as Kaylin and I both, you know, Kaylin was the one who taught me this. You're the one who taught me this, Kaylin. I remember when we were really studying Venus, this was a very startling thing for me because Kaylin and I were really uh, beginning to do this work and and really revive a very ancient practice of honoring Venus as Inanna. And when Kaylin was telling me that, okay, Morning Star Venus in many different societies, um, there's like a 27 page article. I'll never forget that. You said, here's a 27 page research article that shows all the different societies that practice blood sacrifice or warfare at the first appearance or heliacal rise of morning star or in that period. And I remember this was a, a healing crisis for me in the moment we were doing this work together. I was like, oh my gosh, what are we doing? Like, what are we reviving here? These are the blood mysteries, right? I didn't understand it. And so something I began to digest, like we, when we start to work with this, we began to digest this. What is this? What is this sacred power? How do we be in right relationship with it? And so I bring that up now because I remember when we were even creating this course, our first course with this, we talked a lot about sacrifice. You know, what Morningstar, clearly there's a theme around sacrifice. And then Kaylin, you would say, this is about a sacred offering, right? Sacrifice is to make sacred. It sacred. Make sacrifice it sacred. to make sacred. Right. right. So, so the question is, you know, there are a couple of themes here. One is you know, when Venus was in the, with the sun, just before she appeared as morning star, that's when we saw what happened in Maui. Now we're seeing this other activation. Clearly there's something that's a, a mirror. Um, but I think the question is, you know, when we're going through morning star phase, we know we're letting go of something. We're surrendering something. This is mystery. We're letting go of something. What are we needing to let go of? So I'm just going to introduce those ideas. And I'm guessing Kaylin, Sheridan, Raven, any of you might have anything to add or anything that comes to mind uh, in this conversation. Or not. <laughs> I do. Yeah, I do. I'll okay. start to jump in with that. So I think that, you know, tuning into Sekhmet with this Leo Venus cycle, right, which Leo is about self-love stepping into our own divinity right it can be the idea of like stepping into our 
honoring our aspect of Sekhmet is another way that we could look at it, right? And so when I was first kind of starting to read and learn more about Sekhmet, you know, the story like Caleb and Sam is like, bloodthirsty went on this like rampage you know and I was in um you know there's a lot of like Sekhmet can like help with anger and anger issues and I was kind of like whoa you know but then exactly what Kaylin said too it's like we have to remember like all the stories we know of the goddesses all the mythology is all from writing right so, so and writing is post patriarchy right so it's like all of it comes through that place so i love what you said raven about you know she is the original mother goddess triple goddess creator right she came before the patriarchy right both of you had said that and so um I think, you know, so I kind of was looking at it through that lens, but then interestingly, like quickly, you know, with this being my Venus return, I had a situation that brought up a lot of anger for me. And that is not, well, one, an emotion that generally, you know, the feminine is really allowed to have that much as well as I tend to think of, oh, you know, I have a lot of like grief or I have a lot of fear around from my trauma, but not as much anger, but wow, a lot of anger came up for me. And then all of a sudden I could track it back through previous experiences. And then ultimately it just kept going back to that like anger at the patriarchy that creates all of this separation and so much hierarchy, right? Superior and inferior, better than, less than, judging, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And I feel like that is one of the biggest things that we have an opportunity to release and work on letting go or I guess a couple of those things during this Leo Venus cycle, right? What are the things that stand in the way of our own divinity stepping into our power as a divine, right? We are all so powerful and we just give our power over to, you know? And so I feel like this cycle with Sekhmet, this anger has this beautiful place. It's like something that you wrote, Tammy, and I wrote it down, like, learning how to honor her, the process of destruction that precipitates a new life cycle, right? She also teaches how to channel sacred rage. So it serves its purpose of initiating necessary and transformative change, right? And it's like, she embodies the great mother as guardian and purifier. And it's like, anger is this place where we just go, nope, this is the line in the sand now, enough is enough. I'm we're done with that. Right. And that's so powerful and so protecting. We're talking about Leo, but like, that's that aspect of Aries, right? Fire that just goes, uh, uh, yep. That's over now. Not doing that anymore. Right. And so I feel like that's such an important piece to allow ourselves to have that as we're going through and letting go of these systems that don't serve us even though there's lots of ways we support them. But Sekhmet can help us go, nope, okay, I'm not going to do that anymore. And I'm going to look at the ways that I've been doing that. And I'm going to release and let go and stop doing that and keep increasing my awareness so that I contribute to what I want to see created, right? Leo, lioness, it's the creator principle, the divine into the world. So um, I feel like that is a really big piece of this Leo Venus cycle that leads to that self-love and that compassion on the other side. Right. So rar. Yeah. There's my rar. Sure yeah. Sure <laughs> thank you for, yes. Thank you for jumping in there. Absolutely. But thank you. And for the self-love aspect, because again, for those who are just popping in, we're talking about um, morning star Venus. We're talking about her connection to Sekhmet. We're talking about share it. We're talking. And when we work with the Leo Venus cycle, we are in a one and a half year meditation of what is the actual archetype of Leo in its essence, stripping away the layers of patriarchy. Leo is not just about being this shiny, like performer, clearly, you know, on Instagram with all your like, bling, you know, <laughs> Um, there's a lot of Leo going on right now. And this is, you know, that's fun too. Like that's, but, um, but Leo, what in it, what is it in his core essence? Like we're really invited into that question and you're saying, yeah, it's about sake. It's about self-love. It's about 
that's one of the things we would say the bones of Leo has to do with what is radiant radical self-love and also how does the feminine express power? What is actual authentic feminine power? What is sovereignty? These are some of the themes that we as individuals, male, female, whatever our gender, we're, we're invited to ask what does actual authentic feminine power look and feel like and how can that be regenerative? And what you said about sacred rage, that has to be part of the conversation. And what strikes me often, especially in spiritual communities, especially with women is, you know, we, I think sometimes we go so quickly to like, get over your rage or handle your rage, but many of us never even actually came into contact with it in the first place. So that might actually be the first step. And maybe that's part of what we see in the, you know, social media spheres or whatever, sometimes is as immature as it may be, maybe it's actually people claiming a certain primal rage that they haven't had access to. I'm not saying that that's okay, but anyway. Well, I, I think one of the things that's been more on uh, the uh, my radar anyway, I, and maybe the just in the greater collective is rage ceremonies, yeah. doing it in a sacred way, finding a doing way to sacred. access that rage yeah. and that fury and that pain and that whatever it is that needs to get moved in a sacred space so that it actually is being transmuted and transformed and not just uh, fed, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and then the other, the other thought that occurs to me is that uh, I, I always love to say this in relationship to Leo. So you, um, I know Tammy and Sheridan have heard me say this before, but Marianne Williamson's quote um, that set, that comes from her book, Return to Love. And that, and of course, I think the Leo cycle is all about returning to love to really genuine, authentic, divine, pure love. She says, our greatest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness that frightens us most. We are all, I, I'm not saying this exactly right, but quote, close. We're all children of God. We are all meant to shine as children do. Our playing small does not serve anyone. When And when we can allow our own light to shine, it gives permission to others to do the same. So when we come together in this cycle and we work this these mysteries together, we of course exponentially increase the power and potency of what we're doing, what we can do on our own. We do um, we can do even more powerfully in a group. And when we have that intention, we come together uh, to infuse the world with this ex expression of pure love divine love that is the essence of who we all are uh, all creation is uh just somehow we got distorted and distracted um anyway that's just the what i feel is so exciting about this particular cycle is that it really focuses on the our intention and attention on how do we get to that what's the rage what's the anger what's the uh, blocks and limitations, the beliefs that are in the way of that so that we can move into really embodying and expressing the, the energy of love. And that it'll change the world. If we had enough of us really vibrating with love, it could change the world instantly. Hmm. I think it's important. We've talked about the patriarchy and we've lived with that for so long. And it's important to remember as we remember and re-embrace the goddess aspect of our stories. It's not just Sekhmet, it's the goddess in general. It is that divine feminine uh, mother creator part. And we have been so separated from that. And there's been so much um, obvious ways have been done to keep us away from that. But nobody can stop us from embracing that goddess energy. And she's back strong. When I mean, you look around and it's coming back into common culture, all this goddess reference. And some of it I think is, is trendy, but some of it is very real. And there are many people now who are, who are coming back into their circles, who are remembering just the goddess, who are coming back into the old cycles. And I think this is what's going to save us. Thank you. Thanks for that. I think that's such a beautiful part of tuning into the Venus cycle as well, is that it's a way to 
commune with the goddess, the divine feminine in a very physical, real, spiritual, energetic way, right? In a way that helps us connect back into our ancestral ways and our ancestral DNA, who all would be outside connecting with Venus and the sunrise and the new crescent moon and the eclipses and, you know, all of it, right? So, tuning into that, it's like such a path that helps us walk our way towards the goddess more. So thank you, Raven. I appreciate you saying that. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's, it's a, yeah, it's a way we're reweaving with the fabric of creation. And I, again, go back to what you were saying, Raven, about um, the Sekhmet really being the primal sun, you know, working with that medicine of the light of the sun, and then also now Venus, so these mysteries, um, so, so I'm actually, I'm, I'm a little bit curious if it might be beneficial. Um, this is something that's occurring to me. We were, we were not absolutely certain if we were going to take an hour or an hour and 70 or 75 minutes to do our part of the round table. Um, but my feeling there's so many brilliant wise beings here and what i'm wondering is if it might be good to actually have Kate, catherine for you to do your meditation sooner than later and then that we could have more q a we could have more conversation how does that feel okay. feels great okay feels great. good all right <laughs> so then basically what we're going to do now is we're going to invite raven into um to guide us through a meditation that she's been um incubating for some time and then and then we'll go into q a so thank you take Thanks, it away Raven. thank you so sekhmet has changed this journey four times <laughs> and as we're having this conversation i'm just laughing because so many things we're talking about she put in the journey that didn't that weren't there originally so we're all we're all on the same page here so for those of you who have not done i'm sure you've all done some kind of guided meditation or guided journey work. So I always like to set an intention before we do that. And our intention for this journey is simply to connect with Sekhmet and to be able to accept the gifts and the teaching she has for us. And I can guarantee you it's all going to be very loving, <laughs> very loving indeed. So if you'll just, however you like to get comfortable, just take a few deep breaths and be ready to shift your awareness away from the Zoom and the electronics and whatever you're doing. And just for the next little while, be able to allow your consciousness to shift into another place where you can receive this information from Sekhmet. Breathe in. Exhale. Breathe in through your heart. Feel the flame of your heart expand. Exhale out through your heart, sending that heart energy out into the space around you. Breathing in again through your heart, expanding your heart until your heart is so full that that breath begins to rise up through your throat each time you breathe in, more and more of that breath and awareness begins to move up through your throat into your head until finally the door on the top of your head opens and you are in another space to receive. And you find yourself walking through a devastated landscape. It is dry and stark. Not much is growing except for low scrubby plants that are struggling just to survive. The place feels barren, wasted, misused. There is a sense of defeat, of exhaustion permeating through every bit of dirt, rock, and the ragged plants. You are dressed as a warrior, clad in protective clothing or maybe armor. Ragged areas are stained with dried blood that have long blended in with the old worn out colors and patterns when your regalia was new. A large sword 
is sheathed and is hanging from a belt at your side. Your hand rests upon it, always at the ready to draw it out on a moment's notice of danger. A shield is slung over your back and an array of other weapons are carried on your belt and over your shoulder. You feel very battle weary. How long have you carried the burden of being on the defense? How long have you had to be defensive and defend yourself? You arrive at a place where a great battle has recently been fought. The aura of this place is black and dense. Feelings of intense anger, violence, anguish, and fear linger over the battlefield. It is silent now, but you sense the cries of those who died here. Carefully you walk the area. Pools of blood soak the ground. Nothing living remains. But now you feel a shift in the energy. Your senses tingle and call you to be very alert. Something or someone is nearby. You loosen the sword from its sheath and draw it out. It gleams in the sun. The steel is of the best quality and you have kept it in excellent condition. It is a familiar and powerful force in your hand as if it has become part of your very being, an extension of your arm, your mind, and your will. You carefully assess your surroundings. You do not see anyone, but you know you are not alone. And now, seemingly out of nowhere, you see a huge lioness right in front of you. She is both beautiful and terrifying. She is calmly lapping up the blood from the ground. Her fur is soaked red with it. And you wonder, why is she here? How long has she been doing this? You grip your sword, ready to defend yourself, watching her every move. She makes eye contact with you. Clearly, she knows you are here yet she makes no threat towards you. The lioness stays where she is drinking the blood. She obviously has no fear of you and that is quite unsettling. Yet somehow you are not afraid of her. After a time, she stretches, stands and approaches you. She is truly magnificent. Her tawny fur gleams in the sunlight. Through the blood stains, powerful muscles ripple under her skin. Her eyes draw you to look right at her, to connect with her. You feel great power emanating from her, but strangely, you feel safe and even curious. You take a breath and you meet her gaze, looking directly into her eyes, her beautiful golden, light-filled eyes. She comes closer now, standing right in front of you. With a strong sense that she will not harm you, you reach out your hand and you touch her. Her body is warm. You can feel the power she holds in her as if it were a physical manifestation. Still holding your sword, you use your free hand to explore her and find you are stroking her head, all the while her golden eyes are staring at you. And then she begins to purr, a loud, rumbling vibration that transfers into your body. And as you vibrate with her, she begins to morph. Slowly, her form shifts from four legs to two. She stands upright. A woman's feet and arms, hands and body emerge from the lioness. Her blood-stained fur has now turned into a dress 
of brilliant red with markings of golden eyes emblazoned across the fabric. Golden bands encircle her ankles and wrists. Strong muscles shape her body, enhancing the feminine beauty that she is. Her graceful neck lifts up, supporting her magnificent lioness head. She is crowned with the uraeus, the sun disk and cobra, indicating her ancient power and divinity. This is the goddess Sekhmet, the powerful one, horizon of heaven, eater of blood, lady of the massacre, overcomer of all enemies, sublime one, enlightener, great one of healing, powerful of heart, lady of a thousand tears. And she smiles at you. Oh, welcome, my child. Be at peace. Sit with me. Rest here as I watch over you, and you sit at her feet. Sekhmet eyes the sword you still grip in your hand. You know, you could retract those claws for a while. You are quite safe with me. A deep chuckle ripples through her, and you feel it move through you. And for the far first time in, you don't even know how long you relax and you retract your claws. You lay that sword down on the ground beside you and you loosen and remove all the other weapons you have carried so diligently. You stretch out your arms, your legs, shrug your shoulders, shake off some of the ever-present weariness that has become your constant companion. Yes, that's right, relax. I will sit beside you. And she does. Then she slowly gathers you into her arms. Her arms. Never have you felt such shelter, such a sense of peace, of home. You find yourself surrendering into her, letting the weight of all your worries and struggles just collapse into her. She holds you with great tenderness, yet you can feel her strength protecting you. Oh, dear one, I have watched as you have prepared yourself as a warrior, learning how to battle, to take on the darkness and the fears that swamp this world. You have been valiant, courageous, strong, and endearing. You have suffered much pain, sorrow, and loss. It's time for you to heal. Sekhmet draws you closer, her graceful fingers caressing your cheek, your hair. She finds all your battle scars, every tired and frayed muscle, all the places you hold the weariness from all the weights you've had to bear. She feels the many losses you have suffered. Her hand rests over your heart, knowing the deep pain you carry there. Her gentle caress soothes and heals each of these wounds. And you are filled with a deep and powerful sense of her love for you. There is no judgment, only a deep compassion for you and all you have had to bear. You look up into her beautiful eyes and see a golden tear forming in each one. Slowly each tear drops down onto you. As soon as the tears touch your skin, they absorb into your body and they become golden light that enters into your arteries and your veins. You feel this light streaming through your entire body, coursing through you with a power and strength 
you have never felt before. You feel this light as it floods into your heart, filling each chamber. Your blood begins to alchemize into this light, alchemically transforming into a golden elixir. With each heartbeat, this elixir is pushed out into every cell, into your DNA, into the very deep memories of your cells until you are glowing and transformed. Yes, she says, my love for you is eternal. Most humans have forgotten that the blood is sacred. They have desecrated the blood of life with their wars and their killings. They have violated the goddess and the women who gave them life through the blood. I watch as humans defile the blood, sacrifice their own sacredness for the power they crave. And then I take that blood from them. I consume it. I take it within me to hold it, to purify it, to re-sanctify it, to restore it to its sacredness. I am seen as a great destroyer, but when something has become so defiled, it must be transformed. This is my act of love and compassion for you to take in and hold the desecrated blood within me. It is the great mystery of the alchemy of the blood. I have watched and stood by you and urged you to take on many tasks as my champion. I give you now a new power to help you on your journey. I return the sacredness of the blood back to you. You can feel it now as your heart pumps it, alchemized to light through every cell of your body. I give you my strength, my fiery love, and my fierce compassion. This is more powerful than any sword of steel or other weapon. Yes, you have had to defend and protect, and you will need to do that again. But now it is time to learn to use the love to learn to use the compassion, and the first place to start is with yourself. Ah, but how to be compassionate with yourself? So many mistakes, so many failures, so many should haves. As you struggle with your own imperfections, you find yourself simply surrendering them as burdens to Sekhmet, who takes them from you. Take this time to let go, to allow yourself to feel her compassion for you and let that become compassion for yourself. You may cry and she will hold you. You may rage and she will protect you. If she holds no judgment against you, then could you surrender self-judgment to her? And now you feel a new sense of power rise within you, the power of self-love and forgiveness, acceptance of the strength you wield, and for all the good you have done. Compassion for the imperfect person that you are. You know yourself as sacred, human and divine. You feel the desire to stand in this new self-awareness as it fills you with higher power and purpose than you have ever known before. You are ready to move forward in your life in the new alignment with that part of you Sekhmet has helped you to claim. As you radiate with that love and compassion, you understand everyone is going through something similar, fighting battles, feeling they have failed, feeling helpless. 
Now with your new heightened sense of compassion, turn that out towards another person, one who really needs to feel your compassion. Who is it you are seeing? Why do they need you right now? Allow yourself to simply hold that person in the grace of compassion. Not to judge, not to fix, not to change, not to control. Simply pour compassion out to them. How does that change how you feel or see that person? How does it change how you feel about or see yourself? Very good, my child, Purs Sekhmet. You are doing the great work, the great alchemy, as you allow this change to transform you. And she touches you, perhaps on your arm, your forehead, or in your heart. And she leaves a mark a sort of tattoo. What does this marking look or feel like? Let it always remind you of this sacred alchemy with Sekhmet. And you find you have a gift for her as well. What is it that you give to her? As you offer it, she gladly accepts it, fully knowing the depth of your offering. How does it feel to make this offering to Sekhmet? And now it is time to move on. Sekhmet stands up and you also rise. Slowly she morphs back into her full lioness mode and with a swish of her long tail and a last long look, she is gone. You reach down to pick up your sword and see that the marking she left on your body has also been embedded into the steel of your sword to help you remember to wield compassion in all your battles. You collect the rest of your gear, which feels remarkably lighter, and you head back down the path with a new sense of self and how you bring that to the world as you do the great work. And now bring your awareness back to your breath, breathing in, breathing out. Place your hand over your heart feeling your alchemized blood beating out through your heart, through your whole body. And when you are ready, just return to this time and place. Tammy, Kaylin, Sheridan, I turn it back to you. Raven, thank you. <clears throat> so maybe everybody just take a little bit more time just to integrate. That was such a powerful journey. I'm so grateful. Very healing. So as you take a bit more time just to let that really fully land and integrate, um, we'll just take a moment and then um, we'll begin. Open the space for sharing, but we may answer some of the questions first, so. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Raven, thank you so much. That was incredible.
Thank you, Kaylin. We thank Sekhmet. I just want to honor her. And I want to honor that she kept at me. I did the journey and she was like, oh, that's nice. Now we're doing it again. Oh, that's nice. Now we're doing it again. And then this morning she's like, oh, that's nice, but we're not done. So I just really want to honor her for coming in. Yeah. And I'm very honored to present this on her behalf because it's her all the way. Yeah. The other thought that occurs to me is um, if we think about how our intention and our coming together and sharing this space is increasing exponentially, then with the number of people we have here right now, and then of course there's going to be a lot more people watching later because we couldn't, not everybody could be here now, but um, we have the power of at least uh, 6,000 people in the moment, in this moment of focusing our attention. And uh, I just feel like that can, that's, that's a great start in bringing about the, the changes that Sekhmet's really excited about. The power of 6,000 suns. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the power of compassion. Yes. Yeah. And what strikes too to me is that that you were willing to do the rewriting and the rewriting, and that that was the the devotion, the devotion that many of us are called to right now in our own ways and whatever our sphere of influence is to keep returning. Yeah, thank you. So thank you, Sekma. Yes. Yeah. We can all retract our claws. <laughs> She made me really laugh then. Don't always have to have them out. In fact, I even looked it up on internet to make sure that that uh, lions have retractable claws and, and they do. So I wanted to be sure. I knew one of them didn't, it's cheetahs that don't. But yeah, we can retract our claws. So it looks like Ariana may be yeah. ready. Share. So yeah, let's go ahead. I think uh, on on Sheen is that oh Ariana, thank you. Oh. Oh. or on Sheen, whatever. Okay. Yeah. Well, I do more and more work these days with elders, and uh, on Sheen is an old Irish endearment, mm -hmm. and that's spelled phonetically because in the old Irish it's a u n t i n. Um, anyway, it's a it's an Irish endearment for like beloved great grand auntie mm -hmm. or grand kind of like a grandmother but it, it's specific with grand auntie mm -hmm. and um it's just on my on my screen and I forget that it's on there my name is Ariana husband mm -hmm. and um I want to thank you Catherine for that journey it's particularly poignant for me today because I've had a week of facing off with the patriarchy and um you know in the in the other book we're reading in Ve Ve venus is unplugging the patriarchy and i've really like been faced with that um dealing with the uh, up against and in your face and power over of the patriarchy and and so it was it's really good to and all of you tammy uh, kaylin and sheridan for uh, coming together, the four of you, and providing this opportunity for us to circle up together and to remember and to reenact and um, and that we can revisit this energy so that um, I can keep coming back into the heart of hearts and keep renewing my commitment to come from love and to um, go for loving kindness, you know, and that that's to have it um, be able to keep being expressed in all my interactions and hopefully, you know, like have it prevail. And um, there was one other thing. Oh, so I, I'm not all that great with visualizations, but in the visualization, uh, she in her lion form, like, you know how cats and 
some dogs too will lean on you. I got that, you know, it's just like this leaning on me and it was just so comforting. And um, so that's my share. Thank you for listening. These are my words. Thank you, Ariana. Oh, you're muted. Thank you. <laughs> if anyone else would like to share, they can um, raise their hand if you know how to do that. Um, you can do that with your emojis or you can do it with your literal hand. We can try to find you. Meredith. Meredith. Hi. I was struck during the meditation how... Um, how present Sekhmet is, how readily available, how that she never left. You know, that just moved me to tears. Um, just the, the um, to be a compassionate warrior, uh, so challenging. Um, to not, um, for me personally, not to collapse into um, the openness of feeling, um, to have good boundaries, but to how to how to to keep the doors open, to keep the boundaries uh, boundaries of protection for my sometimes fragile Meredith self in this incarnation, but. Um, at the same time, knowing that 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 I can do that, that's my job. That's that's what I came to do to have compassionate heart and uh, not be overwhelmed by all that moves through me and how to um, hold what I know deeply. Uh, you know the the energy that sings in my bones, so to speak. The um, you know, the ancient, ancient, ancient wisdom that, um, that, that we, that I have everything I need, that I came here to hold, maybe simply just to hold the truth of who we are, and, and first to hold the truth of who I am, of course, and all that self-healing, but, um, yeah, you know, used to, used to, uh, carrying it all on my own, Capricorn ascendant, Chiron in Capricorn, first house, used to to that. So um, for me, this meditation just put me really, really, really deeply in touch with Segment, who I have met before. But seeing her now as an older woman, seeing her now having all I've gone through when I first met her in my 40s, and and seeing her as um, not a stranger anymore, but an ally, or or a yes, yeah, seeing seeing that um, being able to stand with her and and how I can do that, and uh, it's just a matter of me um, stepping in, stepping into my power. We all say that. What does it mean? But um, I found myself. I'll end with this. I I uh, brought my drum turned my video off and went deep and and uh the uh the sounds the tones that came from my uh my root all the way up were so clearing and um so I got I need to do more of that <laughs> and uh and stand with her with her uh holding my heart holding and knowing that um I was made for this time and I can do this. Oh, I'm finished. I'm not finished. I'm complete for this moment. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, I love it. You said you can stand for this time and that we can all stand together in this time together is just so amazing. We, w I think we will create a, a, a change in the collective field energetic field of what's around this planet 
by what we've done here today and what we're continuing to do. Yeah. Every time you say that, Kaylin, I get full body chills. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Thank you, Mary Beth. Remember, she's as close to us as the sunlight. Mm -hmm. Huge and big, but we feel that sun in our face. You know, she's always present. Who else would like to speak? And so is that even with the moon, like when we have the moon and the moon's reflecting the sun's light, where you or might you speak to that? Is well, that part of your the sun is always shining? I mean, it's always right there, even though it's uh, if if it's not shining for us, it's shining on the other side of the world. So she, the sun is always putting out its life force. But yeah, the moon's reflecting back the sun. So everybody, you know, when when we're in the darkness, the moon is still showing us the light. But I think that it's it's important to remember that we're not alone. We don't have to. We shouldn't try to do this alone. That's just going to wear us out and break us. And who who better ally than her? I love what you just said, Raven, that it, it brought to mind the sun is the center. So in our solar system, we're traveling around the sun. The sun is the center. But it's also interesting to note that the sun is traveling through the galaxy. So whenever the sun comes back to a seemingly starting place like a solar return or whatever that it's in a different place in the galaxy um by millions of miles you know each year it's moving and so we're always having a new experience but the sun is the source and so when we connect to the sun we're connecting to that source it's the, the strongest symbol we have of of life force source energy that we can connect with from the planet from our planet earth beautiful Mm, thank you. Rhonda. Yeah. Hello. <clears throat> Can you hear me? <laughs> yes. First, I want to say hi to Tammy. Long time no see. Hi, Rhonda. Hi. <laughs> so good to I've see missed, you. I've missed you. <laughs> ah, you too. Well, two things. Um, I want to know if everyone was affected as much as I was by the Ring of Fire the eclipse in Libra, which ties into relationships. And um, so it was intense for me because um, I'm having a relationship with myself. And for me, what happened with um, this journey by Ravenwood, in a, let me go back. One of my past lives, I was a warrior and I had a sword. I was a gladiator and I was dripping in blood. And so I could feel the intensity of this. And when I saw Segment, I've, I've, I've met her before, um, but this time was different because of my journey. And um, but she told me what came out of this was compassion for everyone. Because as a warrior, I have so much rage in me my whole life, all of 68 years, that I forgot compassion for myself. Mm -hmm. And she taught me that. It was very evident very evident. And this ties into what's happened to me. Um, I had a stroke April 7th. And I'm surprised I'm here. So I'm very grateful to be here. And to meet you, Ravenwood. Nice to meet you. Yes. And um, 
all the other girls I've, I've, I've known. Kaylin, she just affected my life. And Tammy and um, Sheridan. But my point of view has changed because I was, I was, I was close to death. And um, so I'm here for a reason. And I have no anger in me anymore. And this just is an affirmation of that, this, this coming together. And um, I'm working on a relationship and compassion for myself so that I can put compassion out in the world because it's a crazy world right now. I'm heartbroken about the planet. And I've mentioned that before, that all the animals, it's all coming together. We have always fought as people. So that doesn't surprise me. The wars, the turmoil, it's always been. And um, so I just, I just want to thank Segment again, and I'm going to include her in my life, make, make her more aware, make me more, more aware of her. This brought back my connection to Segment. So does anybody, was anybody else affected by the the eclipse in uh, Libra, because the day after the 20th, I had people coming up to me and saying, oh my gosh, I woke up this morning with, with the lightness in my heart. So. Rhonda, it's so good to see you. Oh my gosh, I'm so happy you're here. I am too. I went from a sack of potatoes, my friends called me a sack of potatoes, to wheelchair and walker, and now I can walk without a cane. And I couldn't speak before, and um, I've always been shy about that, but I don't care what people think anymore. <laughs> hey. Right on. That's a B. Uh, Rhonda, that's a B. Good. Yeah. And um, so I can speak, but I, I, I have a, each day is, a, is an accomplishment. By that, I mean, I get clarity. So the timeline is out of whack, but what's time? It's a man-made construction. <laughs> Thank you all for being here and presenting this. Thank you, Rhonda, so much for sharing your story. You feel lighter. You do feel lighter. I do, don't I? Yeah. And, well, I've, and lost, I, I've lost 16 pounds or 18 pounds. <laughs> but literally lighter as well, like, physically, as well as mentally, energetically, spiritually. Yes. All yes. the way lighter. Yes. <laughs> and uh, um, I've been under a lot of stress the past few years. And um, I'm handling it. I don't know why... I have all these challenges in my life. Maybe it's a Pisces thing. My ascendant is Pisces. My moon is Pisces. We've talked about this before, Kayla. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I've given as much as I can. Of course, if I win the lottery, I'll give to all of you. <laughs> but now it's my turn mm. to give to me. Yes. Beautiful. My, mo my mother passed over September 11th and I couldn't uh, travel because of um, my doctor told me not to, but I was there supporting in spirit. My, my brother and sister. And um, so that was a challenge because I'm trying to keep, I'm trying to keep clear and happy and um, so you've all made me happy today. Thank you very much.
Thank yeah. you, Rhonda, so yeah. much. And yeah. thank you for, you know, when you're sharing your story, I think there are, there are 63 people in this room right now as you're speaking. And I think part of what comes to me from your words and what I feel in you is just, you know, there are so many people in this room right now who are also are going through so much. There are so many people and what you're sharing with us really gives me such a strong sense of remembrance that um, of the courage of the resiliency that we each carry and that sometimes those darkest nights also carry within them that process of lightening and you're really speaking to the morning star medicine you're speaking to the medicine of sec met that um, this is what it means also to be human we want to be happy we want to be joyful and sometimes these are this is the transmutation process that we're moving yeah. through personally collectively so thank you yes Thank my you Venus for... is my Venus is a morning star Venus. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> it takes great courage. Yeah. Thank you. Is You're there welcome. anyone else? As we we have just a couple more minutes. I don't know um, if there's anyone one maybe one other person who's just burning to speak to share. Genevieve, I see your hand up. Hmm. I just want to say thank you to Tammy, to Kaylin, to Sheridan for setting this up and allowing the Venus Alchemy and the extended Venus family um, to, to be here. And a deep, deep bow of thanks, gratitude, and love to Raven for her brilliance, her wisdom, and her, her gift that she is in the world. Thanks, Bestie. I love you. Miss you. Thank you, Genevieve. Thank you. Thank you so much, especially, yes, to, to everyone in this Venus Alchemy family, the Venus family, and everyone else who's gathered, and to Kaylin, to Sheridan, and yes, especially Raven. Thank you for answering that call. You know what I initially asking you said okay let me let me check in with Sekhmet <laughs> and that's it you know you're you're connected and it, it feels like maybe there's never been a more important time for us than than now for us to be connected to these sources of um of truth these sources the the, the greater powers mm -hmm. that are um, behind what's happening in our world so yeah. thank you for embodying that well thanks for asking me I appreciate it yeah yeah it's good to be here. I think Sekhmet is just having a great time being so excited and thrilled for what we're doing. <laughs> and uh, and just something I want to mention and uh, something we might want to include in the show notes for when this gets posted, when the replay gets posted, is um, any additional links or information. But um, there are two book groups that we've talked about, the Unplugging the Patriarchy book by Lucia Renee, which is amazing. And the um, Sekhmet Transformation in the Belly of the Goddess by uh, Nikki Scully. And these are free cl book clubs that we're doing. And um, we'll put, uh, put a link in if people are not signed up with us and want to join us, uh, you're free to do that. We'd love to have you join us. We're, I, I feel like the um, attention and intention that we're placing on it by going through these books together has just been another layer of wow. <laughs> yeah. Good. Excellent. I'll and, add and them. I'll add them to the, our homepage as well under classes. They're not there right now. And I did put the segment link in the, um, in the chat, but I'll add those too. So if anybody's interested, you can sign up on our homepage with those we'll Venus. Put in, we'll put them in the show notes as well. So if people are just watching this on YouTube yeah. and going to a specific page for it and also um, Raven and Tammy, if you have any links you want to, we could Absolutely. all put our links yeah. in to Absolutely. the show notes so people can yeah. have easy access is my whole point. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Absolutely. And just, and yeah, so we'll have those. And, and just to, to say that um, the Venus alchemy community is still you know, there are people who are joining that or the book club. So it's such an important time to come together, to be able to have these conversations. And, um, and, and then Raven also, you know, each, each of the women here um, offer really beautiful uh, offerings of readings as well. And Raven, I will just have, I have to rave for Raven's tarot readings because it's also part of why 
<laughs> we connected. So, um, so there's that. So we will include all of that as well. And somebody asked um, how long the book clubs have been going on. And, and really, we've just started. We're, we're two into the Unplugging the Patriarchy and only one into the segment uh, that's already passed. And I think if you sign up now or soon, you can watch the video of the one that has just been completed. So you you're, you wouldn't be far behind at all. Good. And the Sekhmet group, we're moving through that book at our own personal rate. So you can join at any time because there's, it's a very personal alchemical journey. So everyone just moves at their own rate. And then we just gather and share whatever is coming up for us or experiences that we've had. And then the Unplugging the Patriarchy, there'll be plenty. If you only read like the introduction in the first chapter and we're on chapter six, you still have a lot you can contribute and participate because we're talking about the patriarchy as well. So yeah. please join at any time if you want. All right. Awesome. You know, yeah, I, I just, I want to say as we're, as we're closing to um, just that, that, you know, that, that all of this that we're doing here now too, and all that's being unpacked and all that's being healed, that um, it's important, I think, to remember that even as we, we're coming into greater compassion, we're coming into all of that, um, that layer of love and self-compassion, um, that, that to continue to have, you know, the deeper conversations is so important, so vital. So, so glad everyone's here. Um, and someone's asking where, what the, the, the Facebook group is, all of that will be, all of that will be in the link. So you can access that through the YouTube on my page, the Venus Alchemy page and Kaylin Castell's YouTube. So, so much gratitude to everyone. And, uh, may you take all of this good medicine and, um, and may it really heal your hearts. And so that you can be that beautiful, sacred, sacred one that you've come here to be. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> nice to see you all. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody can unmute if they want. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I miss Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank Raven, you. I miss you. Good to see everyone's faces. Beautiful. Aww. Yeah, thank you all. This Everyone. was great. I so, so appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Bye.